The defeat of the Arab countries in the Six-Day War prompted splits. It led Palestinian political and militant groups to give up. They had placed hope in pan-Arabism. In July 1968, Fatah and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine won the most votes. They were from armed groups. Then, on February 3, 1969, at the Palestinian National Council in Cairo, the members elected Fatah's leader, Yasser Arafat, as the head of the PLO. From the start, the organization used armed violence. They targeted civilian and military in the conflict with Israel. The PLO tried to take over the people of the West Bank, but the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, deported them to Jordan. There, they began to act against Jordanian rule. Palestinians in Jordan were about 70% of the population. The population was mostly refugees. From Jordan, they attacked Israel many times. They did this by sending terrorists and shooting Katyusha rockets. This led to retaliations from Israel. In the late 1960s, tensions between Palestinians and the Jordanian government increased greatly. In September 1970, the military carried out a bloody struggle. It was between Jordan and the Palestinian armed groups. King Hussein of Jordan was able to quell the Palestinian revolt. During the armed conflict, thousands of people died. Most of them were Palestinians. The fighting continued until July 1971, with the expulsion of the PLO to Lebanon. Many Palestinians moved to Lebanon after Black September. They joined the many Palestinian refugees already there. The center of PLO activity then moved to Lebanon. They set up bases there to attack Israel and run a global terror campaign. The campaign focused on abducting airplanes. The 1969 Cairo Agreement gave the Palestinians autonomy in the country's south. It increased their control of the area. The area controlled by the PLO became Fatah land to the press and locals. This caused tensions with local Lebanese and fed the 1975-1990 Lebanese Civil War. The PLO controlled southern Lebanon. It used this control to launch Katyusha rocket attacks at Galilee villages. It also used it to execute terror attacks on the northern border. At the start of the 1970s, Palestinian terror groups, led by the PLO and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, waged a global terror campaign against Israelis. They did this primarily in Europe. Palestinian guerrilla groups in Lebanon attacked Israeli civilians. They targeted schools, buses, and apartments. They did this to publicize the Palestinian cause. They also had occasional attacks abroad, for example, at embassies or airports. They also hijacked airliners. The peak of Palestinian terrorism against Israelis was in 1972. It took the form of several acts. The most notable were the hijacking of Sabina Flight 572. Also important were the Lod Airport Massacre and the Munich Massacre. On March 15, 1972, King Hussein of Jordan unveiled his plan for a united Arab kingdom. It would have been a federation of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan and a federal district in the West Bank. The West Bank was formerly under Jordan's control. According to King Hussein's proposal, each state would have its parliament. One monarch would unite them. Hussein made the UAK depend on a treaty between Jordan and Israel. In the treaty, Israel would give East Jerusalem to the Jordanian-Palestinian Federation. Then, it would become the capital of the Palestinian Arab district. They ruled out the plan. The PLO and other Arab states strongly opposed it. Israel rejected giving East Jerusalem to the Federation. The 1972 also saw increasing Soviet involvement. Ion Mihai Pachepa was a defector. He claimed that the KGB and Securitat organized training. The trainings were on covert bombing and plane hijacking for PLO. They also published propaganda in Arabic. It included the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. The intention was to fuel the conflict. The Coastal Road Massacre is famous. The remains of the hijacked Egged coach are at the Egged Museum in Holon. This PLO attack killed 38 Israeli civilians. Perpetrators carried out the Munich massacre during the 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich. Palestinian terrorists took 11 members of the Israeli team hostage. A botched German rescue attempt led to the death of all 11 Israeli athletes and coaches. Five terrorists were shot at, and three of them emerged unharmed. The German authorities released the three surviving Palestinians. They were not charged. This happened a month later. The Israeli government responded with assassinations against the organizers. They also raided the PLO headquarters in Lebanon. 
Other big events include the hijacking of civilian airliners. There was also the Savoy Hotel attack and the Zion Square fridge bomb and the Coastal Road massacre. In the 1970s and early 1980s, the PLO attacked Israel from bases in Lebanon. They did the Avivim school bus massacre in 1970 and the Ma'alot massacre in 1974. In the Ma'alot attack, Palestinians killed 22 children at a school. In 1973, the Syrian and Egyptian armies launched the Yom Kippur War. It was a well-planned surprise attack against Israel. The Egyptians and Syrians advanced for the first 24-48 hours. Then, momentum began to swing in Israel's favor. Eventually, the parties signed a disengagement of forces agreement. A ceasefire then took effect. It ended the war. The Yom Kippur War led to the Camp David Accords in 1978. They set a precedent for future peace talks. In 1974, the PLO adopted the 10-point program. It called for a national authority. This authority would cover all liberated parts of Palestinian territory. The aim was to complete the liberation of all Palestinian territory. The program implied that Palestine's liberation may be partial at some stage. It emphasized armed struggle, but did not rule out other means. This allowed the PLO to use diplomacy. It also validated future compromises by the Palestinian leadership. In the mid-1970s, the Gush Emunim movement made many attempts to set up outposts. They also tried to resettle former Jewish areas in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Initially, the Israeli government forcibly disbanded these settlements. However, peace talks to decide the future of these occupied territories were absent. So Israel stopped enforcing the original settlement ban. This led to the founding of the first settlements in these regions. In July 1976, 260 people were on an Air France plane. Palestinian and German terrorists hijacked it. They flew the plane to Uganda. There, the Germans separated the Jewish passengers from the non-Jewish ones. They let the non-Jews go. The hijackers threatened to kill the 100-odd Jewish passengers. The French crew had refused to leave them. Israel conducted a rescue operation to free the kidnapped Jews. The Likud party rose to power in 1977. This led to the founding of many Israeli settlements in the West Bank. On March 11, 1978, about a dozen armed Palestinian terrorists landed their boats in Israel. They landed near a major road. There, they hijacked a bus. They sprayed gunfire inside and at passing vehicles. This killed 37 civilians. In response, the IDF launched Operation Litani three days later. The goal was to control southern Lebanon up to the Litani River. The IDF achieved this goal, and the PLO withdrew to the north into Beirut. Israel withdrew from Lebanon. After that, Fatah forces resumed firing rockets into the Galilee region of Israel. After Operation Litani, many diplomats tried to end the Israeli-Lebanese border war. This included Philip Habib, Ronald Reagan's envoy. In the summer of 1981, Habib arranged a year-long ceasefire between Israel and the PLO. Israel ended the ceasefire. This was after an assassination attempt on the Israeli ambassador in Britain. It happened in mid-1982. His name was Shlomo Argov. Abu Nidal's organization attempted. The PLO had shunned them. This led Israel to invade Lebanon in the 1982 Lebanon War on June 6, 1982. They aimed to protect North Israel from terrorist attacks. IDF invaded Lebanon and even occupied Beirut. The U.S. and European governments brokered an agreement to end the siege. It guaranteed safe passage for Arafat and Fatah. A multinational force would guard them during their exile in Tunis. Phalangist militias allied with Israel during the war. They were Christian Arabs. They carried out the bloody Sabra and Shatila massacre. The militias killed 700 to 3,500 unarmed Palestinians. Israeli troops surrounded the camps with tanks and checkpoints. They watched the entrances and exits. Israel was heavily criticized for its role in the Lebanese war. It was also blamed for the Sabra and Shatila massacre. The criticism came from within Israel as well as from outside. An Israeli commission of inquiry found that Israeli soldiers knew about a massacre. This included Defense Minister and future Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. They knew several times without acting to stop it. This led to his resignation as Israel's Defense Minister. In June 1985, Israel withdrew most of its troops from Lebanon. It left a small Israeli force and an Israeli-backed militia in southern Lebanon. 
They were there as a security zone and buffer against attacks on its north. Meanwhile, the PLO led an international diplomatic front against Israel in Tunis. This came after a wave of terror attacks. They included the murder of MS Achille Laro in October 1985. Israel bombed the PLO leaders in Tunis during Operation Wooden Leg, 